Hey, everybody. Or should I say, hey, anybody, I'm Captain Tommy Scoville, and that wildcat behind me there is Squirrel Nut Zipper. And Squirrel. she's getting ready to break Squirrel. something. See her? Yeah, that's an evil Squirrel. kitty. Well, there's a uh, there's something back there that's driving her insane. All right, people, this is a uh, this is a, a follow up on some true crime stuff that I've done for a long time. This is uh, this is Ruby Frankie and her evil sidekick. Uh, <clears throat> although today we're really concentrating on Ruby Squirrel. Got something you'd like to share? Okay. Yes, I know. I did your head. Yeah, there you go. Here's the real squirrel. Hear that? Yeah, that's the real squirrel. Hey, come here. Yeah, she sees a bug or something. It's going to drive everybody nuts. Uh, oh, well, we're happy you can catch a live in the evening as well. This is about Ruby Frankie. Ruby Frankie, if you have uh, been living somewhere other than uh, near the lifeboat. Ruby Frankie was a YouTuber that had a very, very huge audience. In fact, she did a billion views. That's what a B, Johnny Scoville. A billion views. Yeah. That's stout. That's stout. That's a, uh, that's a pretty strong career right there, a billion views. Uh, and she did it primarily um, with uh, Mormon moms watching what she was doing, which was being a Mormon mom. Um, and one that was pretty uh, serious about discipline. And the discipline started coming through. Um, <laughs> Love and Life says, I think Ruby was the evil sidekick. Uh, you know, look, I, I, I can uh, I can definitely argue that point on either side of that. Uh, she, nice jump. She's a pretty sick uh, human being, Ruby Frankie. However, in her friend, um, Jody Hildebrand, she found the perfect storm. She found somebody that had been doing the exact same thing. Shannon Smith says the magic word. Ding, 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 ding. Yahtzee. People, our girl's a journaler. Our girl is a journaler. Now, so both Ruby Frankie, the mother, who had a YouTube channel, did a billion views, and her friend, Jody Hildebrand, who was a counselor, God help us, she was a counselor. Uh, the two of them got together and were uh, doing a MLM slash cult, multi-level marketing slash cult uh, kind of deal where it was sort of the opposite of misogyny. She got together with a, with women and said, the, uh, the evil on planet Earth is caused by men, uh, your husband in particular. A lot of really, really twisted stuff. However... Sick like cult religion. That pretty much sums it up right there, Elena. Pretty gross stuff. Oh, I know all about Ruby. It's a terrible, sick, cult-like religion. Horrible. Yeah. Now, in defense of their normal cult-like religion, this is a bastardized version of their cult-like religion. Know what I mean? It's not the normal one. Uh, yes, misandry. Yep, rampant misandry. This was a, a woman who was not fond of men. Now, not particularly fond of men myself. But she took this to a level that is a little bit um, over the top. Beautiful Day says the uh, LSD prophet. I'm kidding. It says LDS prophet told members they should keep a journal. That's why most of them do, I guess. Well, checks out. They do listen to the prophet. All right. So as this one works out, by the way, you know, pray to whoever you want to. So you start hurting kids and I'm going to crap all over you. Um, right. That's where we got to draw the line. So they were hurting kids. And one of them, because two in particular, and we're going to be talking about these two in particular today. As the story goes, they were in Ivan's, Utah, right? Ivan's is in the middle of Egypt, the East Egypt. You familiar with the East form of Egypt? Yeah. You know the East form of Egypt I'm talking about. Anyway, it's out in the middle of nowhere. And I do me the middle of nowhere. And the boy who was absolutely starving and so thirsty that his life was in danger, right? Literally down and dirty, <laughs> disgusting, awful, horrific, ugly, 
to a point where you say there's no way a parent does this to a child. It doesn't make sense no matter what happens, right? We, we bust on the cult of Scientology and how they treat kids. Awful, right? This is worse. This is so jacked up. So this kid escapes because he's got no food. He's got no water, you know, and he was evil enough to get caught sneaking water off of a garden hose. Can you imagine the temerity of this kid? Huh? To sneak water because he was thirsty? Well, on the bright side, they beat him for it. He was tied up. And when the ligature, right, the ropes cut badly enough into his legs and arms that it left marks, they used honey and cayenne pepper. My brother is the king of pepper. Do you know this? For real, Johnny Scoville is the pepper king. <laughs> cayenne pepper and honey. Really? To do this to, to your own? I couldn't do this to somebody that burned me. I couldn't do this to somebody that ripped me off in a drug deal. I couldn't do this to somebody, right, who hurt somebody I care about. To sure? do this, if you did this to my son, I would set you on fire. Yeah. I promise. What this, what this person did to her own kids. All right. Now, here's the thing. When this came out, Right? We did this. Wow, did they plead guilty quick or what? From a convict standpoint, I said, I cannot believe the speed at which these people cut a deal. It didn't even look like we got past the arraignment. Normally, there's a very long, drawn out process to this, right? I said to myself, and I said to all of you, this was quick. And I think I even speculated at the time that they must have had some dirt. Right? They really must have had some dirt. Well, now we know what the dirt is. Holy hell, we're going to talk about it. And you know what the dirt is? Her own words. This girl journaled about what she did to her kids in detail. So we don't even need to. And this is why Ruby Frankie went in there quicker than you could say Jimmy Crackhorn and I do not mind. Right? went smoking into that courthouse and said, I am guilty and remorseful. Truth is, I don't know how much remorse is in that woman, right? I think she's the kind of evil that doesn't come around often. Thank God. But I was talking with Johnny Scoville earlier and we were talking about, he said, you know, how jacked up are these kids now for the rest of their friggin' life, right? Is there any hope for these kids? I think there's plenty of hope. I think because of when we, yeah, Jody never missed a meal. <laughs> you know what? That's mean. And I'm putting it up there because you're right. Um, she wasn't missing a lot of meals. I think that. Uh, yeah, I'm putting it up there. Anything men can do, women can do better. I, I won't argue that. I see no point in arguing that. Um, I'm not very good at anything. So I'm not, uh, you know, I'm never even in that argument. I'm never even in that discussion. And that's a beautiful thing. Uh, yeah, she didn't miss too many meals. So after uh, she abused her kids, at the end of the day, she did what I guess every good um, abusive mom does. And that is to write down the date, right? And what she did to her kids on that date. So we're not seeing all of them. This is there's certain stuff. I think that they leaked just enough of this journal. I'm not even being funny, by the way. I think that they leaked just enough of this journal so that people like me, right? And people with considerably larger channels. But people, what I mean is people that come and talk to uh, will give you an opportunity because I don't think the mainstream media is going to spend enough time on this. If you really want to get a handle on just how ugly this is, we're going to spend some time on this. Because this is narcissists always writing down their crime, says info dump truck. Interesting, isn't it? Interesting, isn't it? Does seem to be a uh, thing. <laughs> it really does seem to be a thing. So the first time that the, of all of the stuff that they're releasing, the first thing that we see is on, uh, let's see, May, January, February, March, April, May. Right? January, February, March, April, May. Yeah, May. So on May 21st is the first journal entry that we see that has anything to do, anything that's going to get our attention. And on this day, it says, uh, 
Joey writes, receives blessing from, um, from temple president, right? Came down to Judy's house to help clean. She lists all four of the kids' initials. They're, they're done by initials in this. This is on the 22nd. After this temple blessing, she brought everybody down to start putting them to work, right? And, and this is a strange entry because she says it literally like you would say you were dropping off employees. Like, th like these kids were going down to work. There was no other, very, very much uh, matter of fact. On the 14th of July, we're now referring to these two kids as E and R. E is going to be, um, E is going to be the daughter. R is going to be the uh, son, okay? So on July 14th, E refuses to work and screams, has her hair shaved off. As, as a form of discipline, she takes her, her baby girl and shaves her hair off because she wasn't uh, uh, answering and doing things the way that uh, she thinks a, um, a preteen should. Lovely. R, her son, on the 15th of July, runs away at around 1.15 a.m. Um, Ruby finds him at 3.19 a.m. Odd, she speaks of herself in the third person, which is really odd to me. July 10th on a Monday. She knew it was going to be right in court one day. Yeah, right? It's R's birthday, and he doesn't even know what month it is. This is mom being proud of her uh, of her parenting, apparently. E and R have been in, uh, in so much deviant behavior, they won't control their bodily functions. Actually, when you abuse kids, that happens. Their inability to control bodily functions is a sign of really serious childhood trauma. They are both, uh, they are both furious. Their selfish, sinful lifestyle is being intervened upon. I told R, oh my God, this is really hard. I told R that he imitates a snake. He slithers, he snakes around looking for opportunities when no one is watching, and then he scurries. And if he wants to uh, emulate the savior, he needs to be 100% obedient. No wavering. This is so horrific because not only not only are you going to abuse these kids, but you're going to do it in the name of a God that these kids don't have any idea. You know, that what this does, I'll tell you something. I've said before, so often you just, you grit your teeth. I'll tell you something. These people, they weren't talking to my God. You hear me? These people had nothing to do with my God. I promise you what the hell they're talking about. But these are some sick, sick people, man. E is better behaved when she's with Jody. She likes to think she can still manipulate me. I gave her a pixie haircut. All her long hair is gone. No more distractions with pretty hair. Lovely woman. R told me he would rather have a glass of water than me as a mother. You know, go figure. Huh? Put a kid in the desert, make them stand outside, make them work in the hot sun. And he says, I'd rather have a glass of water than my mom. I, I, I can imagine that. I would imagine a shot glass of water at that point. He would have traded for that shrew. Here it is two hours later. And I catch him drinking water from the ho uh, hose. Stealing water, she wrote. After catching him drinking water from the hose. Stealing water. Water. Can you imagine having your kid in the uh, southern desert of Utah? I mean, we're literally talking about the desert, people. We're, this is the desert. She won't get life for this, will she? There's no chance in hell she gets life for this. The, the most that we can hope for is that she's going to spend about 40 years in prison. And you know what, man? Everybody on planet Earth should show up at this woman's 100 plus degrees, says Calf, Crafty Witch. And she's 100% right. Right? Every day. Over 100 degrees. Water is free by law. Thank you, Info Dump Truck. I mean, holy hell. How can you steal water, right? The better question is, how do you withhold water from your child? I have never in my life wanted to hit a woman. Like, I mean, honestly, I think I could punch this chick in the face. I think I could do it. Thought the max she could get was 30. 
You're right. I didn't know she's right. Isn't it? It's uh, it's a it's. She needs to put her in a cell. I gotta look. Lock Is it? it I I, I think. Away. No, I think thir- uh, I think she's got the potential. There were four t- Spanx Calhoun. Can you see what that that woman's charge is? I mean, what the sentence was. It's a. It's like a something to. It's a second degree, I know, but in that state, you get a really weird sentence, and it's like a a, a something to fifteen. So she got two, she got two uh, um, possible fifteen year sentences. Is that what you're telling me? My understanding was uh, she could be looking at forty years if they max it out. No, there is, it is forty. No, it's forty. She has four possible ten year sentences. And you're going to parole them to each one. There are four. Yeah, four to 30. Okay. If it's four to 30, it would have to actually be four to 40. Because four means a one, two, right? A one to 10. So she's got four one to 10s. One to 15 times four. Thank you, Angie Barnes. So in theory, if they maxed her out on every one of these, and they're never, there's never going to happen. Oh, there's a max in Utah of 40 years. It's not, she's not going to get 40 anyway. Not going to get 40 anyway. But if they were to give her, if they were to give her eight or nine years on the first couple, but what they do is they're going to, okay, no 30, I promise. Okay. Well, then I'd like to see her get 30. There's nothing that they could do to her that's going to be justice. Okay. Here's mom, right? Great mother here. Ready? E told me she figures they've been here eight weeks. I asked E if she felt that she had made progress over those eight weeks. This is being tortured by a Hildebrand, right? This is her daughter talking to her. She has asked her daughter, you, you think you've been here two months. Mom apparently doesn't know how long she's been there from the sound of this journal. She doesn't know how long she has given her kid up to be tortured by, by Jody Hildebrand. Apparently, she's not sure how long, but E told me she figures they had been here about eight weeks. I asked if E if she thought she had made progress over those eight weeks. Yes, with an exclamation point. I told her she was delusional and that she has made no progress. She continues to lie and manipulate. Last night, her screaming and, are you ready? And her trauma headbanging or evidence of no change, or trance headbanging. Maybe that says trance. What does that say? What do you, she has terrible penmanship. It looks like mine. Any idea? Train, trains, track, track, track. I don't know. I think it says trance, but she's talking about headbanging. My son did this as a child, right? We had to go and talk to, to shrinks and doctors. He did it until he was about two, which happens all of the time. We're talking about a child who's nine, a nine-year-old child banging her head is a kid screaming for help. This is one of the most evil bitches that ever walked planet earth. And I'm sorry for that word, but if she's not, then there's never been one. July 14th, Friday, E woke up. I reminded her that if she whined, cried, or squinted her eyes at me, or soured her face, I would be buzzing her hair again. If she is going to act sick, she can look sick. She agreed with a smile. I told her because she didn't listen the night before, she would do two sets of boxes slash stairs with a five minute break. She did the first set uh, easing and, and eagerly. After five minutes of rest, she began whimpering. When she got to the bottom of the stairs, she slipped, which she put into uh, uh, parentheses, and dropped the box. I put her in the dog wash, and I shaved her head, and then back to the boxes. I th- God help us, man. This is... Okay. When he was outside today... It was hot. She acted like she was dying. It was so pitiful. I told her that hell is much hotter. I told her it's going to uh, burn the, uh, it's going to burn the wicked. So either way, get used to it or start changing. 
Oh man, I hope that something horrific is happening to her this evening. I really do. I just hope that she's having a really bad friggin' night. <sighs> then I see... Uh, <clears throat> She's out now, apparently looking for her son who has run away. And I see R walking. I see R walking on the left side of the road. I call Jody to let her know. I turn the car around and stop. I get out of the car. Uh, and R is shocked to see me. Get in the car. You shocked to see me, I ask. R nods his head. He gets in. I'm in the back and R is in the front. So apparently, uh, Jody must have been driving. 2.45, I wake up. 3 o'clock, we leave in the cars. 3.15, I call Jody with R. The sun started lighting in the roads about an hour and a half later. The devil wants me in prison, wants my children dead. I meet Jody back home now. This is an evil woman with a capital E. Seriously, this is a person that every once in a while, right? There are people that, that end up with um, kids who end up with a lot of kids that never should have had one, right? It's sad that we need a freaking license in this country to go fishing, but we don't need a license to have a kid. <laughs> Love and life. You're absolutely right. Jody brainwashes the men and the couples. Doesn't make it right. You're right. But he was victimized and played, to, you know, listen, absolutely a hundred percent. Now let me make this really clear. I'm not giving anybody a pass in this one. There's no way. But I don't think that, I don't think the husband knew what was going on. I really don't. I'm not giving the cat a pass. He's a crap father, right? What was going on while they were making those 1 billion views was bad enough. And he knew about that. He's a crap dad. Sorry, right? I'm not telling you I'm father of the year, but this dude filmed him being a bad dad. I'm not pulling this out of my uh, backside. Fancy Nancy. Good to see you. I'm not pulling this out of my backside. This guy's a crappy dad. Now, I don't think he knew his kids were tied up in a dungeon, right? In Ivan's, Utah. I don't think, uh, I don't think he had any clue that, you know, his kids were in a dungeon. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not thinking that. Shannon Smith's a great question, isn't it? It's a great question. Why didn't he know what's going on with his children? Well, here's what happens, right? Just like everything else, just like cults, just like dope, just like everything that gets us off of the, tr the, the uh, railroad tracks, right? Start out with a great concept. We start out with a great concept. And he hears this. He hears, because I've listened to this guy's tapes. I've listened to every single interview this cat's done, right? Jody's uh, old man, her, her husband. This, this dude is delusional. And you can hear it change the longer he's away from the brainwashing. But he said, and I'll make friends with all of you, but he said in, uh, in one of the, uh, the audios, Fancy Nancy, correct. And this is essential. You're right. This is, and this is right what I'm getting to, but he didn't see him for a year. And that's how you should be saying that, right? But he didn't see him for a year? Seriously? While working on his marriage? Like, what is that about? Okay, well, here's what it's about. It starts off with this. It starts off with him going to a men's group, right? And talking to his wife, who's talked to Jody, who says to her, Every time he asked for sex, that's rape, right? I'm not kidding you. This is her doctrine. And you can hear him saying it. So if a man asks a woman, even when you're married to, hey, you want to do it? That's the R word. That's the doctrine. I'm not buying that. You can buy it any way you want. I don't buy that. But he did. He bought into it. And then you, when you hear him in his own words, he said, the guilt I feel, right, for asking her to get lingerie or do things like that. This woman started with really small little increments of, hey, you know, maybe you're disrespecting her sexually. Have you ever thought of that? But then the next thing you know is what you're doing is so off the rails that it's causing problems with your wife, with your kids. And over the course of six or eight months of going to these groups and getting a little bit more of your identity handed over to them at every one of these groups. Group therapy is a great thing, or it is the most evil thing on planet Earth. You get a group of people who are opening up and being honest. If you get somebody in there that starts taking that group in a bad direction, the things that you can do for to those people is horrific. Because they're vulnerable? 
Yeah, because they're super vulnerable because they're opening up and they're sharing their innermost and deepest secrets. And Jody, right, was telling everybody in the church about these people's deepest inner secrets. She is the most evil person that has ever run a group. Tracy Range, I think I'm not giving Kat a pass at all. I'm not. I'm not. I just don't think he knew that there were ropes tied around this kid's ankles. We know he knew there was child abuse. He was in the videos, right? If you're, if you're new to this, there was disgusting child abuse videoed on the daily basis for their channel. What was it called? Eight of us or some crap? Something eight. Who cares? I mean, honestly, the dumbest crap in the world. Um, he was brainwashed viciously. And you know what? I watch it the first time and I go, this dude's a piece of crap. Eight passengers. Thank you, Cricket. Thank you, Cranky Sciences, Lacey. Appreciate you. So in the beginning, I'm going, this guy's just a piece of crap. That's really what it comes down to. Cindy, please come aboard. I'm saying this guy's just a piece of crap. Then I watched three other victims, right? Not of Ruby, but of Jody. I watched three other men who have been so emasculated that these cats are beta to a level you've never seen. And I'm just keeping it real, man. I couldn't be in the same room with these cats. She has beat the man out of these guys to the point where they're cowering. They're cowering in the interviews. They look like, like dogs that have been beat too much. And you hear the stories, these horrific stories. She took a man who had been, I talked about this on one of the other shows. She took a man who had been a survival, a survivor of SA, right? And he, she thought it would be a really good idea to have this person go to group therapy with nine people who were in group therapy for assaulting young boys she put a victim into a assault group therapy. You understand? A predator group she put a victim into. I mean, you literally got to sit there and go, I'm sorry, what? You got, you, you have to sit there and say, I got to come up with the most evil thing I could do on earth. What could I do? What could I do to this person? That would be more evil than anything because I can't kill him, right? I mean, honestly, how do you come up with this as an idea? This is a sick woman. You know, somebody earlier said, I think the uh, I think that the sick one is probably, you know, the ringleader is probably, I don't care which one the ringleader is, but I'll tell you something. Jody is a kind of evil. If you've never seen her niece, God bless her niece, right? God bless her niece, all right, and the voice that she's uh, that she's developing, because she was abused, horrifically abused, and lived to tell the tale. Yeah, Wesley John Holmes though, has probably said that a lot better than I uh, than I can. Uh, her niece was abused. I mean, absolutely mind effed by uh, by Jody, and and that's the truth. Now she is an unbelievable voice for people that have, have uh, survived. She is an unbelievable voice. And has poison, uh, Grace, I'm sorry, they. I didn't do that right. I believe she's uh, she uses the uh, pronoun they, if I'm not mistaken. She uses they. I mean, they use they. I'm bad at this crap. I'm trying, though. I swear to God I am. Because I have mass respect for they, for them. For real, I do. Right? They survived a really disgusting human being, right, in that aunt. But what Jody did to her niece is one of the most disgusting things. But thank God that she has the voice that she does. Because you know what? I wouldn't have believed that the husband, I mean, honestly, I was ready to crucify the husband. Now, I'm not giving him a pass. In fact, I think he probably should do time. Just keeping it real. I think he probably, probably needs to do a little time. Not because of the ligature stuff. I don't think he knew that. But just look at what we saw on film. And I think he needs to do some time, right? He was absolutely um, viciously guilty of child abuse of allowing it to happen. The niece is really a beautiful um, young lady, yeah, to be sure. Talented, amazing artist, yeah. Fancy Nancy says, may she rot in prison. May we all write letters when the time comes, right? If the boat's still around, I promise I'll remind you. 
because they're going to start coming up for paper, believe it or not, a year from now. And you go, huh? Yeah. Her first parole hearing is going to be in nine months, give or take. Now you say, how's that possible? Well, they've been in jail this whole time and they've been getting jail time credit for that, which is more than one day. You got like 1.6 or something like that jail time credit for time served when you're in jail versus going to prison. So they're getting time served. When they get to prison versus jail, they're going to have to go to pro parole on the first of the four sentences, Shannon. They have no chance of getting out, mind you, but they still go to parole. Now they can say, we're, we're going to parole you right now. They're not paroling you to go home. They're paroling you to your second sentence. That first sentence would be gone. Now you're on sentence number two. You'll do a year on sentence number two and your parole will come up again. Now they can parole you to your third sentence. Or the first time that they come around, they get so many letters from people like us who say, you better not let this stinking thing out after a year. She better max out these damn sentences for what she did to these kids. Now, they get enough of those letters, right? People show up, people make noise. The, the board doesn't like their name getting out, right? They would like to do their soft, cushy job without anyone knowing who they are. If they happen to say, yeah, maybe two years is enough on the child abuse, right? Putting hot pepper onto a kid's wounds. Well, I think the world should know their name. Don't you think? The father was 109% whipped by the wife, says Jen Marie. I could argue the uh, the nine percent, but I would say you're uh, in the ballpark, right? The coffee, uh, yeah. You know what? Here's the, here's something. This is a this is good because you're not the only person thinking this. I promise. Coffee first, please. Says my question is how many Mormons are going to be on the parole board? It's a legit question, isn't it? Because we know that this look. How did this go down? Jody Hildebrand got her clients from the church. We're not saying anything that isn't a fact. The church, ward, captain, or whatever, you go in and say, hey, I need a little counsel. Me and the wife aren't getting along. Don't worry about it. We have got somebody for you, and we're going to pay for the first couple of sessions. You go in and say, my child is acting up. Oh, have we got somebody for you? She's the best in the business. Thank you. Bishops, that's the word I was looking for. The bishops. They go in, talk to the bishops. The bishops recommend, and the church pays. You didn't think all of that big house down there in Ivan's were just from people that actually wanted to give that woman money, do you? If the if the church picks up the first three or four months, she's billing pretty good. That house down there, did you get a look at that puppy? Keep that real. Huh? That looked like a drug dealer's house, didn't it? That front door got away 2,000 pounds. Watch the video of that front door opening. It looks like you could go, when the cop bumps it with his elbow, this 2,000 pound door just goes, Swings out of the way. Oh, that house costs a lot of money. That is a fine piece of uh, construction. Would you live in it? Hell no. That place looks like a friggin' dungeon. How did she get so rich, says Kestrel42? Well, we know that answer, don't we? Huh? The way she got so rich is every single time somebody went in there and asked for help, the cult said, here you go. We're going to send you to Jody Hildebrand. And we're going to pay for the first three months. If she's charging, you know, two grand a month and they're sending her people like this, right? The one guy that stuck around, his insurance was paying. They were insurance paying for this. And she charged this huge money. This was not small stuff. And then toward the end, she was, you know, these were people who had the money to pay, right? You and you send your wife, if you think to yourself, oh, you know what? My wife wants to go and learn, learn about, uh, you know, Different, uh, you know, different things that they're doing with life coaching. She comes back and goes, you have a penis and you should be shot. For real. I promise you. You do a Jody Hildebrand uh, two-week spin-dry uh, training and you come away with uh, not a lot of fans of people who do not match you on the, uh, the number of X and Y chromosomes, right? Hey, my name is Wendy. How are you feeling now? Hello, Wendy. Uh... Ruby's teenage son was paying 900 a month for counseling from Jody. 900 a month. Wow. Wow. Ruby wanted to give her the financial rights to eight passengers. Well, that doesn't surprise me at all. Now, raise your hand if you think that 
uh, she might like women, Jody, because damn, she rolled into that house and got the wife to kick the husband out of the bedroom and the house for a year, right? We're not doing it. We're not touching each other for a solid year. I have had affairs. I haven't been a good person in my life. I've done things that I shouldn't do. And you know what? Even an affair will not make you walk away from your kids. What was going on in her head that she couldn't remember exactly how long ago she dropped her babies off in the middle of the desert to be tortured? If they weren't having an affair together, what was going on that was so powerful in her dome that she didn't give a crap about dumping two kids off to be tortured? She didn't even know, know how long they had been there. I mean, listen to those journal entries, right? The daughter didn't know, but the daughter guessed it had been about eight weeks. I think that's an odd writing style. I think that mom would have said she thinks she's been here uh, eight weeks. You know, it's really only been two. Funny, right? Or something. I got the idea that maybe she doesn't know when she uh, dropped her off. Jody eventually didn't bathe and covered her arms with hoodies because she is a uh, cutter. Are you you're referring to Jody Hildebrand was um, self harming? I did not have any idea. I have always noticed that that woman uh, does seem to wear a lot of hoodies. You know, she definitely wears a lot of hoodies. Her kids were spread all over cleaning people's houses. Correct. Interesting take. Kestrel says Ruby hated being a mom and hated her kids. She didn't care. Different from not knowing. Uh, well, I think that she's a psycho. I really do. I think she's a psycho. Elizabeth Whitney says she smelled terrible. You know this from uh, from personal experience? Wow. I'm sorry that you knew her. She had to have smelled bad. I mean, look, I'm not trying to be uncool, but when you look at Jody Hildebrand, you don't think to yourself, I bet she smells fantastic. <laughs> right? She just, she has that look like a, like a summer breeze. No, she just has that look like a men's locker room. Um, yeah, Kestrel, I can't, how would you argue this? How could anybody argue with Kestrel on this? Even if you want to as a parent, right? If you go, okay, maybe you got off the rails. You can't hate your kid, right? Watch the videos. Watch the videos. And how do you come up with the, anything other than, would you do me a huge flavor? Yeah. Would you grab me some aqua? Yeah. Sorry. I caught a picture out of the side of my eye of a watch. Sometimes it happens, you know what I mean? You ever have that happen, Calhoun? Your uncle's got that thing on his computer. It's a big, big watch thing. And like, just corner of the eye. I caught it. I'm like, that's a paddock. And then I looked again and I'm like, you know what it is? That's their new Calatrava. And on the dial, it's got this like black and gray checkered thing. And it's just on the center of the dial. It's the sickest thing I've ever seen. I think it might be carbon fiber. I'm not 100% on that. And I'm really sorry that I kind of went off the rails there. Uh, Jody also made money by a company called Connections. What a terrible name for that damn company. She acted like a life coach or whatever. Uh, it was extremely expensive to attend sessions or buy them. Yeah, now, thank you very much, Jody Scopo. Uh, yeah, you're absolutely right. So this Connections thing is what I was talking about earlier. It was like half MLM, half cult, right? Honestly. Now, MLMs have a cult thing going anyway, yeah? But if you're praying during your MLM meeting, oh, well, then we've really grayed some lines, right? Because people will say, anytime I say MLM, people go, well, that's a cult anyway. Look, man, I've been real honest, right? I, I did that crap. Um, it's just a hustle is what it is. I understand the cult-like language. I understand the indoctrinations and all of that, right? Um, they are very, very similar, you know? But they're different. Um, what they were doing really did blend the both of them massively. Shannon, I, I know what you're saying. The problem is when you, when you look at cults, right, there are, there are some things that you're supposed to tick off on a cult and MLMs don't usually talk about end of, end of world prophecy. They don't usually talk about a deity and the person who is sort of the king crap on top isn't really a king crap on top in a cult that king crap on top person 
sort of runs the world. And in an MLM, really all they do is kind of sleep with people a lot and do stupid things, right? It's it's. But I understand, I'm never going to argue that they're not wildly similar. But I don't think you can argue that if you're praying during your MLM meetings, then you're really into the cult-like properties. Can we agree on that? MLMs usually don't talk about demons, says Cranky Scientist. True, but theirs did. Deeming just won the comment of the day award. Deeming, I would like you to drop your microphone, maybe even throw it down like a spiked football. If Sestroming had a face, it would be Jody. Can anybody uh, argue with that? How funny is that, Johnny Scoville? Totally if Sestroming had a face, it would be Jody. Boom. MLM good. means multi-level marketing. Multi-level marketing is a type of sales that was uh, pioneered last century in the U.S. You are the only one without sound linear equation. Everybody else definitely has it. If not, they start yelling at me. So you're probably the only one. Can someone tell them that? Uh, so yeah, multi-level, uh, multi, multi-level marketing. What? Okay, multi-level marketing is a deal that's a distribution designed so that a company allows a distribution network to be set up by anybody that wants in. You're selling this uh, product, right? This widget. You have the ability to sell it and make a commission, or you can sell to me the ability to sell this and make a commission. Because you could sell that to somebody else who can do the same thing, we're talking about multi-level, right? So you get paid six levels deep or 10 levels deep or whatever. And they say to you, if two go get two, who go get two, which has never happened once, right? Sounds great. And what really happens is if you're really kind of slick and you're a good salesperson and you don't mind standing up in front of, um, well, info dump truck, yes and no. So a pyramid scheme technically does not have a product. The, and I know all of this because I did this scam business. I was a part of it. And the reason I was a part of it is because I was a criminal and this is a criminal business, right? It is. I don't want anybody fool you. MLM is a criminal enterprise, but a pyramid scheme was the exact same thing. You would say this, okay, info dump truck, bring me $500. Jen Marie, you bring me $500. Bacon bits, you bring me $500. And Jason P, all of you bring me 500 bucks. When I get the fifth one, I go from the bottom rung of the pyramid to the next rung of the pyramid, right? Now, I bring in four more people, I go to the next rung. And when you get to the top, all of the money that then comes in from the people below you goes to you. So when you get to the top, you get 25 times 500. That's a, that is a pyramid scheme, okay? There's no product. You just bring in money and the money is the product. That's a pyramid scheme. If you justify the product with water that is worth what? $1.50 but we're going to charge $30 for this water because in it is dandruff that came off the back of a, uh, of a dung beetle from Africa, but this particular dandruff cures cancer, right? Ah, we can't say it cures cancer. What we can say is it has shown some very positive results in some tests that they did in Nicaragua, right? But this stuff is amazing. And you have to charge $30 for a $1.50 product because why? Well, because we have to pay out all of those payments. You understand? This is the $500 in the pyramid scheme. But because we have a product to justify it, we can call it multi-level marketing. You understand? That's the concept. Mary Kay is a pyramid scheme that has a product. And because it has a product, a bunch of products, right? We call it multi-level marketing. If the product was only money, we call it a pyramid scheme. Now you go, okay, so what is, there you go. Casey gets it. Tupperware, Mary Kay, Avon, etc., can be considered multi-level marketing. Yes, Amway to be sure, the king. Amway is the king of multi-level marketing. The largest privately held business on planet Earth. They have their own airport, right? They're huge. If they were publicly traded, they would be one of the biggest publicly traded companies on Earth. For real. They do money you would not believe. I look like Father Guido Sarducci. An MLM has to make more than 70% of its profits from selling its products or services, not enrollments. Catch that? 
70% of your business has to come from products and not, new recruits. and not new recruits. Now, you know how you do that, right? You call it front loading. And when you get in, you say to the person, hey, you need to buy a bunch of product. If you don't have a bunch of product, like if you went to Burger King today and you said, hey, I want a Whopper. They said, I don't have a Whopper, but I have a picture of a Whopper. Bah, 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 bah. These are the BS things that they tell you and get you to buy a bunch of product. And in the process, you sign a little piece of paper that says, I'm going to. I'm selling this product. I'm not buying it to justify my paycheck. Do you remember? We did we did one of these companies and I used to drive around in the middle of the night with like 25 friends and throw product into dumpsters. I'm not kidding. Throw product off bridges. Well, we gave it away until there was nowhere left to give it away. When people would be like, don't bring that stuff. I don't need any of that stuff. We're literally, you're, you're throwing it into dumpsters. But you've got to buy the crap to justify the check. Um, surviving together says Amway world headquarters eBay, is less than five miles from my condo. And so damn big. It looks like an airport. It's PV, baby, personal volume. PV got to do your PV. Got to do your PV, your personal volume. Maybe the last month, buying a thousand dollars with the stuff. So you get your paycheck. I refuse MLM products too, people. And listen, in my defense, I didn't know what an MLM was until I had gotten rich for doing one <laughs> for real. I'd made so much money doing one before I even knew what it. There was such a thing. Somebody brought me a really cool product and said, if you can sell 20 of these in a week, right? This is how much money you're going to make. And I went, oh, damn, I can do that. Why give money for nothing, says uh, Kate D. No, it's not money for nothing. It is absolutely a pyramid scheme. And when the person sits down and explains it to you, they explain it like this. Every single network marketing company or multi-level marketing company in the world you make a lot of money if you can convince 10 people to spend five grand or whatever the number is, right? A pyramid scheme cuts out the middleman and says, we're running a pyramid scheme. If you can find 20 people, right? Who come in with 500 bucks, you basically get 40 times, right? 20 or 500 or whatever, however the pyramid is built. And it is just a straight pyramid scheme. Everybody involved knows it's a pyramid scheme. You know why it's illegal, right? Because eventually you run out of people. The reason that MLM is allowed to continue is because Congress here in the good old US of A had a hearing on it, right? It was the MLM hearings. And what they determined was that every seven years, there's a brand new group of idiots who haven't heard of MLM. Deserve to learn the hard way. And they, do, they need to, to uh, learn the hard way. They need their comeuppance. They need their comeuppance. They need, they need to get to, to me. It's going to happen to them. They need to get invited to something on the weekend. And they go, yeah, we're supposed to hear about this thing. This guy's doing yeah, <laughs> Raise your hand if this is your first Amway meeting. I'm telling you that um, that was my icebreaker as a public speaker for, for a couple of years. I used to go out and go, I say, if I was speaking in the first position, you can't do it. Herbal Life is a huge one. Absolutely a huge one. I know the guys that started Herbal Life too. I did some work with those cats. <laughs> One in particular, he used to say all the time, he didn't like flying into LAX because he had to fly over the Herbalife building and he got kind of screwed in the deal. I mean, which is really funny. There's nothing funnier than people who run MLMs talking about how they're getting screwed because it's all they do is screw people for a living. Yeah. yeah. Connections are still having meetings led by Pam. How can I get into one of these meetings? Holy uh, hell, uh, how can I get into one of these meetings? There's no way I can be active. There's no way. Is that really? Put a link. Can someone get a link? Yeah, somebody find me a link to that. Everybody see this? Calhoun, let's leave this one up for a minute. Or can I get one of the um one of my wrenches to put that uh link up for me? Miss Sunrise Dawn, you're in our thoughts and prayers. Sorry. Got your phone there, Johnny Scavo. Um, I thought this was a show. Uh, you know something? Here's another thing that you're not going to hear too many people say. I promise. In fact, you can you can tell me if I'm the first person you've heard say this, because I would be curious to know if I am the first person you've heard say this. But I got news for you: network marketing is rife with money laundering massively 
And you have no idea how many people are laundering money using network marketing. I know that this is going to be, this is going to go over the heads of a crap load of people, but it's multi-level. So if you max out your pay plan, right, by going, let's say you have to sign up 10 people to max out the pay plan. That means that's the most money you can make, but you've got to sign up 10 people to do that, right? So if you were 10 deep with 10 people, Ted, this person had 10, the guy above him had 10, the guy above him had 10, the guy above him had 10. Then you took all of your money and put it on the bottom and everybody got paid. What ends up happening is they end up paying out about 72%, right? That doesn't sound great, but an MLM, that's massive. <laughs> that's massive. That means with shipping and everything else, the company ain't making much. But for a person that's got $25 million, they're trying to turn clean. All you got to do is dump buckets full of money in at the bottom. Let these things, people cut you a check, right? Yeah, you're going to lose about 22% on it, right? But you're going to get a bunch of product that you can dump out of your back window, <laughs> driving, driving down the street at four o'clock in the morning. You know? You know, Miss Sunrise Dawn, cats have a way of doing that, don't they? Inappropriate heifer says, Avon Lady Colin will get in here, half. Look, I'm going to tell you something. I'm sure it's not money laundering, just a bit of spot cleaning. <laughs> Tracy, that's funny. I'm going to be, uh, I'm not going to lie to you, people. I might have put a couple of dollars uh, illegally through an MLM or two. You thought that MLM pyramid selling and network uh, marketing was the same. Well, no. Multi-level marketing and network marketing are just, just synonyms for the same thing, right? Which is a, now pyramid selling, right? Pyramid schemes technically were something that popped up in the 50s and they were just money. And if you went through and built your little pyramid of money and by the time you got to the top of it, you actually made like, you know, 10 times your money or whatever. And guys would go, damn, that was easy. And they would cycle back through. And if the guys that you did it with also got paid more often than not, they would cycle back through. And very often the guys that were setting these up were actually making a killing, right? But you had to be a bit of a con man and a bit of a hustler. Um, and then Ponzi, right? The guy that, that made Ponzi schemes famous. You understand the concept of a Ponzi scheme. A Ponzi scheme, which gets used synonymously with MLM and pyramid selling and things like that. It never is the, that. But the definition of a Ponzi scheme is where you're using the money from the first dude through the door to pay off the next dude through the door, right? So picture it like this. I say, I'm Tommy Scoville and I, uh, I have an investment firm and I can guarantee you 15% annually on your money. And you go, holy hell. 15%. My bank isn't even paying 1%. And I say 15%, but got to leave your money in there an entire year. You pull out money out before that year and the penalties that you pay are through the roof. The guy says, okay. And he gives me a hundred thousand dollars, right? And I keep bringing people in like this and I keep bringing people in like this. Well, that first year, the guy rolls around and he says, Hey, I need my, uh, my, commission on that, right? So I got $15,000 coming on my hundred grand, correct? Yes, you do. And I kicked that person $15,000. There's his 15% commission because I did so well in the stock market. I didn't even put a dollar into the stock market. I'm just sitting on all your money in the back. I'm playing a little football on the side. You know what I mean? I'm catching the occasional two-team parlay, putting 25,000, 30 grand on a two-team parlay, um, that kind of thing. Now, Unfortunately, eventually, yeah, you're stealing from Peter to pay Paul, right? So now this guy that I paid $15,000, six months later, he comes to me and he says, hey, Tommy, uh, my, my daughter's getting married. I need that money back, right? I'm not going to get 15% this year. And I go, yeah, no big deal. Now I got to give him back his 100K. So I got to go into that bank account. Now think of how many people this was happening to with Bernie Madoff. <laughs> How many people were saying, I need my money back? How many people were saying, I need my payout? How many people were saying, ooh, take that payout and roll it over to the next year? That's what was happening to most of these greedy guys. They weren't even taking their payouts. 
So you gave me a hundred thousand dollars. And at the end of the year, you're supposed to get 15 grand on the payout. They go, Hey, roll that in, put that in. So now I got 115 that I'm getting 15% of. Um, do, 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 do. So you you see where I'm going? And that's what happened with Bernie Madoff. Bernie Madoff went in and the first year that Bernie was doing business, he went yard. He was fantastic. And he made a great return for people's money. He wasn't looking to rip people off. He just kind of thought he was better at it than he was, right? So the next year he starts doing the same thing. It's puts and calls. He was doing, um, he was playing the commodities market, the futures market. And he got his, you know what, handed right to him. They said, Bernie, here you go. Here's your backside. Handing him his butt. So he said, Eesh. on the bright side, he did so well that first year and made so much money that every single person said to their friends, hey, you want to make some money? I got 9% on my money last year with Bernie Madoff. 9%. And everybody and their brother jumped in, right? And more money came in and more money came in and more money came in and more money came in. Right? But unfortunately, um, he kept losing cash. And then he got to a point where he said, you know what we need to do? We need to get a different computer system in here. And then what he would do is he would execute the trades on his computer system right after they happened. In other words, I watch Microsoft go up $65 a share. I write that I just sold a bunch of Microsoft and then I take that transaction that was actually somebody else's and I put it into the computer as if I actually did that. And everybody is looking like, holy crap, that dude. Everyone else is just, you know, throwing darts at a dartboard. That man was hitting home runs every single thing he touched. Only trouble was none of those transactions were, re were real. How weird is it that his name was made off? I've said that a bunch of times, right? He made off with a bunch of money. Unrealistic profits usually don't work for a long time. Yeah, they don't. Because if they do, everybody jumps in on them. And sadly, in, in the financial realms, it, I'm not saying it's a zero-sum game, but it sure as hell ain't a everybody wins game either. You know, it just doesn't work like that. You know something? There's a good takeaway from the day, huh? You know, Iced Autumn, don't trip. I'm doing another show in an hour. So I wouldn't lose too much sleep over it. I'm going live again at the normal time. This was just the, uh, this was just the, I can't stand Ruby Frankie. And I think you need to hear her own words of how she describes herself. And you know what? Here. If, if the God you're praying to thinks it's okay to hurt a child in the name of discipline or anything else, find a new God. You're doing something wrong, right? You're doing something wrong. If you're if you're comfortable doing the things that they were doing, then then your God's wrong. I'm telling you, there, there's a, it's just the the most disgusting thing in the entire world. Pepper and honey, cayenne pepper and honey, with a wooden stick that they mashed into the into the uh, wounds. Can you believe that crap? I mean, my God. I promise you that. Not the one I'm praying to. I pray every day and it ain't to that God. These people, I'm not, you're not putting the name Christian on these people. I'm sorry. I'm not letting that happen. They're not Christians. They're not. The good news, I don't think they're pretending to be. What? I don't think they're pretending. No, to be. I mean, they, they do like to throw his name around. And uh, trust me, he's, he's not happy about that either. Do you know something, creepy old lady? I would uh, I would cut off uh, a finger um, to have the opportunity to have they on the lifeboat. They being uh, Jesse Hildebrand. I, there's not much I would not do to interview Jesse Hildebrand. I don't. She is um, exclusive with who she works with, and uh, I would. Uh, but if I could. I would put that, um, I would honestly put that as kind of like my uh, my holy grail interview. If you gave me a shot of interviewing anybody, I think that um, 
that that's one of those uh, people. That would be one of my Holy Grail uh, interviews. See about that? Good thing JC isn't a Christian. So I wish I had a dollar for every time I've said that. I wish I had a buck for every time I've said that. That would be incredible. I would love to do that interview. I have so much respect for, uh, that's where I saw them as well, was on Cults to Consciousness. Um, it's pretty unbelievable, isn't it? I want to tell you something. This is, this is important to me. It really is. We live in a world today. Uh, we live in a world today where, uh, where dudes are, um, are under attack. So are women, but dudes are under attack and we have this kind of culture uh, war against men a little bit, you know, we really do. And there's, you know, the, the toxic masculinity discussions and just a lot of stuff that, you know, they would like us to be a little different than, than we kind of are. And by, by just how we're born, you know what I mean? I really truthfully believe that they, they kind of want the reaction of the man who finds the boy when the boy goes to the house and rings the doorbell, the reaction of that man, that's, that's a man, right? Please love that dude, right? That's a man. And, and, and that's the way men used to be. You know what I'm saying? That was a tough stand-up dude. He was struggling like a you-know-what to get through that. I don't know if you've seen it, but when he's, he struggles so hard, he can't say the word tied up or kidnapped or, and he, he's trying. He was a true man, says Sweet Liberty. He really is. And watching that guy, yeah, real men don't hit women. Real men don't even think about that, right? But that man's reaction, uh, they're out there. You understand? There, there, there are guys like that man that are still around. And sadly, somewhere along the way, maybe Jody Hildebrand came across a bunch of guys that weren't like that dude. But somewhere along the way, she met somebody, right? A guy that had to have done her so dirty that she just thinks we should all be tortured and killed. She does not like boys, right? She doesn't. And it's pretty vicious. Uh, if she was a woman, I, I mean, if she was a man, Zelda, I could tell you exactly what was going to happen to her. They could not protect her enough in prison. If that was a man, there is nothing they could do to protect them. I'm serious. I don't care what kind of walk alone. I don't care what they do. Someone's going to get to that. If, if either of them were men, the guys would be going like this. Those kind of charges in a men's prison, people literally will pay for the right to be the first person to get at him, to have the ability to hurt that individual. As sick as that sounds, I'm not joking. People get off on that, you know? Shannon Smith, God, right? What happens if he goes to the wrong door? Has that occurred to anybody else? For real. Thank God that apparently everybody in that neighborhood thought Jody was a sicko. Did you get that, that vibe? That dude knew something was wrong with Jody. When you listen to him, he knew something was wrong with that, that with that uh, woman. Yeah, she's a sadist. I don't think there's any doubt. There's no doubt. You could not, you couldn't write what I read to you. Lucinda, good to see you. Um, you would not be able to, there's no way you could write the things she wrote in her journal if you just weren't a sadistic piece of crap, right? It's tough to watch, isn't it? It's tough to watch. Not so dumb blonde. Right. <laughs> Spanky Calhoun knows more dumb blonde jokes than anybody on planet Earth. Don't get mad at him, but he, he does. He did as a kid. I shouldn't say that. His mom was uh, was blonde. And when Spanky was really, really young, I taught him a couple of blonde jokes. And then he had that memory, you know, so he just kind of got on a tear and it was great. He actually told me two or three of the funniest blonde jokes ever I got from my kid. He probably doesn't remember it, but the scratch and sniff one is a good one. But how do you uh, put it at the bottom of the pool? Easy. Yeah, it's funny. Oh, come on. Relax. Yeah, I'm going to – Johnny now is, is paranoid that I'm going to sink the lifeboat with a blonde joke. <clears throat> Ruby said that she never wanted a fifth or sixth child and which children were tortured nearly to death. 
child five and six. That's very interesting, Kirk. I was not, you okay, Calhoun? Look, you just may have lost a, uh, a vital organ. You all right there, Ben? Um, that's very interesting, isn't it? Uh, it's also pretty interesting that her, her older kids seem to realize just how messed up she is, right? Um, I think that, how to put it? <laughs> the videos uh, outed her sadism, Tommy, in my humble opinion. They made me uh, sick to my stomach because it was so clear how much she hated them. I think, I mean, it. here's the thing, Kestrel, uh, you and everybody else, right? I mean, what happened to this? million dollar machine because i'm telling you right now i don't care what demographic you're in a billion views they made a lot of money right frightening amounts of money uh but to 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 get derailed the way they did it's because people like you all got sick to their stomach and people started calling you know, the in the journal entry where she talks about how they they uh, they already want to take her kids and put her in prison. She's not talking about she was talking about her channel getting hassled. She felt like she was the victim. You, I didn't read this, um, but a lot of her journal entries talk about her being victimized, how badly she was victimized by trolls. Right. And all she was trying to do was be a good mother and discipline um, her kids and blah, blah, blah. Right. And she cleaned out the kids college savings account. Wow. 85 K in a bag somewhere in Jody's house. Wow. Classy, classy woman, right? Classy, classy woman. The, uh, the frightening thing is, uh, honestly, the, the big red button should be ashamed for allowing that channel to go on. Because if you were to go and look at any of the content, it's just the kids, right? It's not her talking about stuff. She filmed her kids around the clock, right? I would, the most, can you imagine? I can't imagine any of it. Honestly, you know, the, that one clip, what really sunk her entire, uh, her entire channel. I agree with you, Ice Autumn. And this is what I was saying earlier, right? This is, uh, he seemed to be into the cruel punishments on YouTube before Jody, right? That's what I said. Just what's on film is enough to put the cat in prison. But I don't think he knew the kids were tied up. But again, the cruel punishments on the YouTube channel should have been enough to get him locked up. Did dude live there when the kids were locked up? Not so dumb blonde. No. No, the kids were not locked up in mom and dad's house. The two kids were locked up in Jody Hildebrand's house, which was in... Ivan's Utah, right? They're not from Ivan's Utah. If I'm not mistaken, um, Calhoun may correct me on this, but I think they're from American Fork, right? I think they're from AF. But if not, wherever they're from, they're from a long drive from Ivan's Utah. They're not, they're, that's not where they lived, right? By the way, there had been discussion about buying a home for no other reason, right? Literally, but they want, they were looking for property in Arizona. Because apparently you can't really, you know, sweat the evil out of a kid in Utah the way that you can in Arizona, right? You need the, uh, you need it a little bit hotter, right? Oh, uh, you think that Ruby may have been wearing the pants in that family? Let's think about this, shall we? I'm going to go with Yes. Yeah, I'm going to go with, yeah. How long were the kids there being abused, says Sir Tedrick Walker? Um, that really is going to be, um, that's going to be open for debate and discussion, right, at length. I, I will say that I believe the abuse has been going on for five or six years, right? Um, now, they were being tied up and held in a vault, right? that had a safe door on it. I'm not talking about, I'm literally mean they were in a vault. Now there was a toilet in there and there was air conditioning, but it's a vault. It has a vault door. You can't open it from the inside. You can only open it from the outside. Why someone builds that, right? For any other reason. You apparently need 
Yeah. This is right, too, by the way. You apparently need a piece of property in the middle of the desert with saguaro cacti for the kids to run into. And she literally means that because what part of the discipline was to force the kids to jump into a cactus? Run that by your uh, your brain. Think about that for a second. Kestrel says she enjoyed causing her husband pain as well. <laughs> I'm sure. I think she enjoyed making her uh, husband uncomfortable but nothing like the torture of the kids. She was someone who should never have been a parent. You're right. Um, Zelda says there are two women I'd like to confront. Zelda, I'd like to just have your back. Just in case you confronting them didn't go as planned, I'd like to just be the backup singer. Maybe bring Johnny and Spanx. Um, yet bound and tied to the floor inside a vault. Sick right? Sick. Let me tell you something. If that kid didn't get out, they're dead now. I believe this. I really do. I think that, thank you, Shag Nasty. I think that they were just continuing to push and to push and to push. Where was it going to go? You had them jumping into cactuses. You had them working outside in the heat with no beverage eventually they die. Yeah. There was food in the safe room that they couldn't reach. The sun was hogtied on the floor. That's a fact. There was a, um, a cupboard of sorts that they had him just tied up out of reach of. And then mom writes in the journal that he's like a snake slithering around. Yeah. Looking for food. I could bring a boat full of people, Tampa Bay. I sure could, couldn't I? <clears throat> you know, I remember back in college, we we would buy an old beat up car and uh, to raise money for a charity or for a fraternity or for whatever was going on. They would, you would give them a dollar or five dollars. And for a dollar, you could hit this car with whatever they had there, like an ax, a sledgehammer, a thing they called a monster mall. For 10 bucks, you could butt, you could hit a window. For five bucks, you can only hit metal. So if you were a stud, you wanted to take out the A-frame or the B-frame because you're hitting metal, but you're going to bust some glass anyway. But anyway, I'd kind of like to see that done with both of these women. Right? Five bucks, get up, give him a shot in the head. The next guy gets a five spot, that kind of thing. Jody was part of the movement that wanted female bishops. Wow. Got crushed. Very resentful. The therapist was how she got back at men. How interesting. How interesting. I... I don't know anything about that. I don't know if, uh, if you know, if there's any truth to that. It's a fantastically interesting concept. <sighs> Sorry. I could see her being that person, though, couldn't you? There were pictures of how full the house was, um, of where the food was. But, of course, the kids couldn't reach it. Yeah, and thank you, Johnny. Uh, and it would be, it's not, if, if you look at those pictures, and I know you know it, but there's, chocolate syrup like there's it, it honestly looked like they were putting stuff that would just be enticing to kids angie barnes says it would be like winning the lottery to be first in line i bought uh, a lottery ticket today took a two dollar chance on a lottery ticket today because uh the payout is over a billion dollars uh, but uh i would trade that billion dollar lottery ticket for five minutes in a room with jody hildebrand i promise you i would <laughs> I promise you I would. Like the, you're not going to get in trouble, put both of them in a room. I'd trade you that billion dollar lottery ticket for that and just go back to doing the boat. I'm one of those guys that doesn't want to quit his job. What do you think of that? I really am the guy that if I won the lottery, I'd probably keep doing this. I really would. It's just a, such a great way to uh, hang out with my kid. You don't know this, but I'm staring at him the entire time. You know, Calhoun, wasn't here earlier. I mean, the last time, but I was, yeah, billion with a B, Tampa B. I'm about to win 1,100 and something million dollars. But Calhoun was doing this one. I was talking about it the other day. I was watching him while he was, uh, while he was working, right? Because I have, it's 1.8, says Fancy Nancy. If we have hit 1.8, I'm going to go on the record right now to say that if I hit this, anything over the billion, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to be willing to spread out. Uh-oh. See, just as I say that, Quibble shows up. You know, I say, I say about to, I'm about to win a lottery ticket, like magic. She just shows up out of nowhere. Um, 
No, I don't have the sniffles. I have a permanently running nose. I don't know what causes it, but Johnny was telling me that my dad, um, you know, complained about that all the time too. I don't, I don't remember my dad uh, doing that, but which lottery? The one that's worth over a billion Calhoun. Duh. No, I have no idea, son. I really don't. All I know is that it's, when I walk by the machines, I never ever do it unless the, uh, the money is like, if, if, if the lottery ticket gets to that unbelievable amount, right? Like when it gets over, you'll send me some watches for tickets. There you go. When the, uh, when that amount gets over the B mark, I start going, you know what? Two bucks, man, two bucks just to, uh, I did get a lot of sleep. Wilford, thank you for telling her that. So that I don't have her yelling at me. Powerball just bought $20 worth. Fancy Nancy competing with me on the Powerball. Uh, Fancy Nancy, I hope you win. I really do. But if you don't, I think it should be me. Relatable Reese, good to see you. Uh, I hope that we are going to see Lisa from Jersey. I'm worried about Lisa from Jersey. If we could get some thoughts and prayers for our girl. She's in the hospital currently with pneumonia. Uh, she's doing okay. Frank Humphreys, that's a very legit point. Uh, and you know what? I want to go on the record uh, to say this. Okay? I do. Because I think that this is important. Right? There are a bunch of unsanctioned subgroups of the Church of Latter-day Saints. And I am not beating on every single person or everybody who believes in the doctrine of the Church of uh, Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Not my beef. Not my argument. I promise. I'm a little bummed out at what the, the the church did giving money to Jody Hildebrand. This seems like a conflict of interest that is of a level that needs to be called out. What I don't ever want to do is call out the people who are part of the religion because I don't have a problem with them at all. I have a problem with the apparatus. Lucinda, thank you so much, sweetheart. I really appreciate that. Thank you. But uh, I appreciate it. And you know what? It really does pay it forward. That's what happens. And I appreciate you. Brazy says, may the six, I love Brazy. Brazy says, may the six children get lifetime therapy. Ruby and Jody get a lifetime in solitary. You know, Brazy, you're pretty, you're pretty sharp, honestly. Solitary would kill them. Both of them. You want to talk about two people that could not do it. That would be it. Yeah. Wow, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba. Love and life. You know something? I'm sorry. I got to put this up here because I had this conversation, man. I had this conversation with, with somebody from Utah who said, I mean the same thing. There was an LDS lesbian cult that was in the 80s. And I heard about Mormons warning females against it. I wonder if she had heard about it. Uh, is she a man hater or a person hater? Yeah, a subgroup that formed. She is a man hater. I promise you. She's a man hater. Um, and you will notice that both of those kids were in her care. Neither of those kids were treated well, to be sure. Neither of those kids were treated well. And we saw what she could do to um, her relative, right? They were wildly abused, her niece, right? They were abused badly, and we, we know physically she was forced to sleep outside in the snow. Just horrific things, right? But the boy definitely took the brunt of the abuse down at that house. And I think that that's, uh, that's, um, I think that that's pretty normal. My favorite colors, I like blue, but my favorite color is pink. It really is. I also like purple quite a bit. She, this, she screwed up a lot of marriages. She destroyed a lot of marriages. She destroyed a lot of families. People, I talk about ripples, right? I talk about the ripple that is the lifeboat. That isn't me, right? That came from Q. Fancy Nancy, thank you so much. I appreciate you, love. I really do. Q started this ripple. Do you know the ripple that Jody Hildebrand has started? You got any idea the ripples that Jody Hildebrand has started? I talk about how one sober person can change the world because the kids never have to deal with any of the uh, the abuse or any of the headache or any of that, right? That never happens. Because one sober person changes the entire world. One horrifically abused person. How many people did Jody screw up? How many husbands? How many uncles? How many 
she destroyed a lot of people. Shannon Smith is right. She destroyed a lot of people. Oh my God, Deeming, I, I, I am not familiar with this, but she said, um, is that the cult that cuts out their tongues, women who cut out their tongue to punish men? Do you realize that that would be the ultimate, like horrific, you may not believe this, but my absolute favorite thing to do with a, uh, a woman is talk to them. <laughs> it really is. I would, I, that would absolutely kill me to have a, to have a partner that you couldn't have a conversation with. That would kill me. Trauma is also generational. How many more generations of kids will this impact? Right? That's the ripples. That's the ripples that are just going to continue to go out from this. Right? Every day, people, every day, you got to think about whether or not you're making a ripple in the right direction or the wrong direction. Right? None of us here, none of us here are a Jody Hildebrand. I don't think we got to worry about that. Right? I don't think any of us here are a Ruby Frankie. But you know what? Sometimes I don't put out the best ripples. You know, sometimes I don't, man. Sometimes the ripples I put out aren't good. And that's just the nature of stuff. I was a, I was a, a, a pretty vicious uh, temper tantrum throwing kid this morning, if you want to know the truth. And I walked away, but I didn't do it very classy. But I, I walked away from a stressed out situation this morning. And where are the kids today? It's a great question, isn't it? I know that they opted um, originally, they opted to go with somebody other than family, which I found really odd. But maybe, uh, maybe I shouldn't. If I'm not mistaken, um, they are currently with family, but it is the oldest of the kids, I think. The one thing I really hope is that those two kids will be able to have surgery to cover up the physical scars on their wrists and on their ankles. Um, you know what? I would want them, but I understand exactly what you're saying. Um, Sweet Liberty says, Tommy, you mean you are human? No, no, I'm not. But every once in a while, someone thinks that it's, it's a mistake that gets made often, but, uh, no, uh, I can understand it would be great, but if by some chance um, there is a line, a white line that is left, um, I think the beautiful thing about this, I think the only really shining thing about this is the whole world knows what happened, right? In any other situation, those kids are going to sit there and they're going to think, yeah, we're tattoos. Um, in any other situation, those kids are going to sit there and they're going to go, what did I do wrong? What did I do wrong that made it so that my mother was willing to do this to me? There's no one that's going to let that happen. You understand what I'm saying? Every single person these kids meet are going to say to them, you realize your mom's bad, bad wiring. This isn't you. This had nothing to do with you. There's, it's not one of those situations where this went under the radar and those kids are going to, you know, there'll be whispers about what was happening to them. The best thing about this is the whole world knows, honestly, that's, that's where the healing is going to start for these kids and hummingbird. We're going back live in a half an hour, hon. This was an impromptu. Don't worry about it. We're getting back up. She dragged the cactus on his skin. God help us. God help us. Hopefully we keep moving forward uh, toward a society where victim shaming is a thing of the past. Um, I think that would be a beautiful thing. I don't know when it's going to happen, but I think it would be a really, really beautiful thing. You know, uh, there's a lot of talk about Diddy, about Diddy camp, about all of these things, right? I'm going to be talking about it a lot. Uh, the way that we're talking about Usher is different than the way we're talking about some of the other victims, right? These are really odd times that we're living in, but it gives us an opportunity to have some conversations that just need to happen. These are some conversations that just need to take place. So it's a good thing, I think, yeah? So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go do a spin dry. I'm going to run and go get myself a cup of coffee. Uh, Spanky's going to get this thing up and running. And you know what, people? On the next call, if I'm not mistaken, 
yeah. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, I think I'm going to fire up the call in. I'll let you guys uh, do a little uh, do a little phone work this afternoon. I can watch my kid rolling his eyes. I can't actually see his eyes. I just assume that he's rolling his eyes because it's he has to do a crap load of work. All I got to do is go, what do you say we turn those phone on, right? right? For me, it's just, hey, what do you say we do? I, I, Calhoun just went. I had a feeling, actually. I saw this coming, so it's not a surprise. Before we went live, he had a hat, a coat, a tie. In the time since I said, I'm thinking we may go live, the hat came off, the coat. He's No, I'm just kidding. Did you, did you know it was coming for real? Yeah, I did, actually. Um, I haven't prepared anything, but uh, I did totally feel it coming. Okay. Well, I figured, I mean, we have the ability to do so. Why are we not using it, right? Of course, we're going to fire it up. That's right. That's right. Why do I have you? Right? Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Yeah. Spanky went and did work today and worked his butt off, and now I'm going to bring him back and put him to work. But you know what? Do, Every do, once do. in a while. I'm sorry, Calhouni, but we're going to do it. All right, people, I will see you back here in uh, in a half an hour. You know what? Let's do this real quick because I want to. Before we get going, one more time, let's just do this. I want to thank everybody one more time. And thank you so much. The, uh, the gifted memberships, I love looking out and seeing all of the green. I really do. Shag Nasty, and just in case, Shag Nasty said, let's do that one more time. Lucinda, thank you. It means the world to me. It really does. Brazy McGurl says, may the six children get lifetime therapy and may uh, Ruby and Jody get a lifetime in solitary. It would kill them. They are, they are two people that so badly need to have an audience, right? They do. When you watch that, it's just pure narcissism. It's pure, unadulterated, get out my way, stomp your foot, light a match. Narcissism. That hey, one, uh, go ahead. I want to throw something in there. I just saw Lord Kiss Freak, my guy, put in uh, the phone number down there. Uh, we tried to get a vanity number, like 1-800-THE-BOAT or something yes, we did. to that effect. Um, there's no combination of numbers plus the boat um, available. So I was trying to think of something else that would be cool, like one eight. The, the numbers in front don't matter. We can do 877-800, right. seven, seven, yeah. whatever. We'll check them all. But if you guys can think of something that's not the boat that would work well, let us know so that we can check and we can get a cooler phone number that will slap harder. Try I'm sober. Okay. I-M-S-O-B-E-R. Should be seven I will, digits. I will I'm send that correspondence out sober. There'd be right no now. Math. Yeah. All, yeah. That's, that's the right amount. We're good. That is? Okay, good. Because I was told there would be no math. But the good thing, too, is you can use things like connection. You can use things like Scoville. Because it doesn't really matter if you spell the whole thing out. Right? As long as the first five, uh, you know, 1-800, uh, you know, califragilistic. It really matters as long as we start that uh, four, first four. All right. Hey, Scooby, hang in there, please, hon. And we're coming straight back, so please come back as well. Call TLB. You may notice right here, this, those are toe beans. You see those? I like on? calling TLB. That's a those, are, those are some really quality toe beans right there. Connect, the, uh, that's another. Toe bean. That is a very mellow pussycat because as I'm doing that, her snout has the other hand covered right over it. Don't you love toe beans, man? Toe beans just bring happiness. 1-800-TOE-BEAN. You know what, Cricket? Calhoun's nodding. You know, any other family, people would be like, toe, toe bean? Doesn't even make sense. I'm looking over my kids like this. Yeah, I can see that. I can see that. So, Scoville House. Okay. And yeah, no, I can see that. Toe beans make sense. Bean paws. Bean paws ain't bad either. The captain. Uh, you know what? Tampa B likes toe beans as well. 1-800-SQUIRREL. I wouldn't bother me either. I, I do like squirrel nut zipper. I could take Spanx Calhoun. I would, I, I'd, uh, we could take 800 Spanx too. Spanky? Spanx Calhoun? Good morning. People might get the wrong idea. <laughs> you know? Yeah, well, my license plate says the pound. Well, one eight hundred spanky. Yeah, yeah, we can't double spanky. down on it. You know, pound the spanky. You know, right. So you're a sobriety channel. Ah, you know. 
We, we do kinky. stuff. We're a kinky sobriety channel. We're, we're, we're all trying to have fun here. We're just trying to have a good time. Um, sorry. Scooby, you may need to get a wrist thing, right? That tells them, hey, I can't be given this, this, or this, right? Um, if not, it has to get put into the computer or whatever. I know that no matter what uh, hospital I go to anywhere on planet Earth, when I go in there, they go, don't give this guy opiates. I know I pop up in the computer system as a guy that has a real serious problem with opiates. So I know there is a way to get it into the system because they sure as crap. I show up and they go, whoa, no opiates. I've made that like abundantly clear. They will never accidentally give it to me. Any number to do with spanking will be taken. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Queen of Awkwardness nails it. I promise you if there's an 800 spank anything, somebody else already took it. Yeah, that's uh, lowest common denominator, right? I promise. The most expensive, uh, the most expensive website that ever sold was www.triplex.com. No, no, no lie. Hello, hello. Only have a few minutes, but I wanted to say hi, all. Look at that. It only took you six seconds. Yeah. All right, Calhoun. We're going to get off the air right now, people, because my son needs to get the uh, call-in show ready. Yeah, see how I did there, Calhoun? I put it all on you. But just because I love you guys, we're going to go in for one more shot of Tobin. See there? Look at that little thing. What a good kitty. And I will see you people on the next one. I'm Captain Tommy Scoville. Thank you to my mods, the greatest anywhere on the internet. You heard? The best mods anywhere on the internet. Thank you for all that you do. I'm not worth it. But you guys are great. What a crew.